already done some matrix calculations, and now we're going to be doing some manipulations. So, all right, so rules of magnetism. This is that whole right-handed rule kind of thing that we talked about, and we're going to determine the direction of that force. All right, so remember, it depends on the magnetic field, and it depends on that speed of the charged particle. We're also going to talk about something called mass spectroscopy. And that's the second part of today's class. It's a bit complicated in the sense that it involves a lot of steps, but it's a lot of simple steps. All right. And essentially, a mass spectroscopy machine or mass spectrometer is the device used to measure the mass of really small charged particles. So the fact that we know every single mass of every single element in the periodic table is thanks to a machine called a mass spectrometer. Anything new that's discovered we can run it through the mass spectrometer to see what it's made of. So for example, if we see an asteroid or whatever and we want to see what kind of molecules are on it, all right, chances are there won't be any new elements on that asteroid, but let's say there's organic matter versus inorganic matter, that's important. And how do we figure that out? Well, we use mass, mass spectroscopy to figure it out. There's also something else called NMR spectroscopy, but that's more um, university level if you guys decide to go into the biochemistry and things like that. So you're going to have to use your right hand, all right? And um, it's going to be your right hand most of the time, but sometimes your left hand, depending on the situation, and we'll talk about that. And I, I talked about before, I talked about how the force, whoops, let's change this to yellow. I talked about how the force is, there's a magnetic force, so we call it FD. Uh, it's going to depend on the charge, it's going to, I'm going to put a comma here, just because I'm not giving you the equation yet. I just want to tell you what's, which variables are important. It's going to depend on the charge. And which other two things that we say it's dependent for? Speed and not the mass. Good answer, but not the mass, not in this case. 
the direction. Well, that's going to be in the velocity because velocity is a vector. It's kind of like a charge feels a force if you put it in an electric field. A moving charge is going to feel a force if you put it in a magnetic field. All right, so V, which is also a vector. Okay, so it's going to depend on these three variables. And that's what your right hand is going to be used for. Okay, so now here is the rule. You um, use your thumb to determine the direction of the charge, the movement of the charge, so in the direction of V. You put your fingers in the direction of the magnetic field, and your palm is going to point towards the magnetic force that that charge is going to feel. Okay? So far, so good? It's confusing, but it would just need practice. So uh, just before I get into that, I want to talk a little bit about convention, because now we're getting into drawing what vectors might look like in three-dimensional space. And a vector um, can go up or down on your page, but now because of three-dimensional space, it can go into your page and come out of your page as well. All right, and now if you think about it, uh, this is going to be how we're going to represent vectors coming towards you into your eye, let's say. And these are going to be what vectors, or Xs are going to be what vectors look like going into your page. And the way I like to remember this is by looking at what an arrow might look like if it's coming towards you or going away from you. If an arrow, like a bone arrow, is being pointed towards you, you're going to see the pointy end, and it's going to look like just a dot. Whereas if an arrow is going away from you, you see the feathers in the tail end of the arrow, and so it looks like an X. That's how I like to remember it. Use whatever device you like, but we need to know that uh, convention. Okay, Just that re vectors are represented this way. So very simple, basic right-hand rule problem here. I have a um, particle who is presumably charged and positively charged going towards the right with a magnetic field coming into the page or out of the page? Out of the page towards you, all right? And you're charged to find, charged, get it? Uh -huh. you're, you're responsible for finding the direction of the magnetic force. So use your right hand. So we're going to do that. Let's see what happens. The force vector. Switch it to red again. That's your blue line. All right, here's my force vector FB. Let's say this particle did some kind of motion, and it was now here, and it had a velocity in the downward direction. All right. What is the force now? So we're going to use our right hand again. F, B, or is it left? All right, so what happened between position one and position two? Here's my particle at position one. Here's my particle at position two. What happened to it? What kind of trajectory did my uh, particle follow? Perpendicular? Diagonal? Others? Other, what's that? The question is, what kind of motion, what trajectory did my particle follow to go from point one to point two? Hmm. All right. So when I have an object that's moving in a single direction, instantaneously, going towards the right, let's say in point one, and the force is downward, and at a specific time here, it's going to go slightly downward because its acceleration is downward. That's where the force is pointing. And if I'm looking at the particle here, then the, the instantaneous velocity is in that direction. And therefore, the instantaneous force is going to be in which direction? Is it going to be down again toward this point here? What's going to happen? Use your right hand rule. 
Which direction is my force pointing to? It's going to be some kind of diagonal down towards the left, right? So my force is in this direction. What does this remind you of? Not Gauss's law. Think back to mechanics. The complicated part of mechanics, which dealt with, that's the C. Mm -hmm. Circular motion or centripetal force. All right. So this here, this object is being submitted to a circular motion because no matter where you take this object, its force is going to be pointing towards the center. So when you have an object where the velocity is perpendicular to the acceleration of force, then what you have is centripetal force. Right? So in this case, you can say that FB is equal to F. C, which is equal to mv squared over r. You guys remember that equation? Oh la la. It's funny how you guys all remember how to add, but no one remembers these kinds of things. Anyway, so it's important to know that your particle in a magnetic field going in a certain direction is going to get submitted to a force called the magnetic force and that force is a centripetal type force all right what's that uh yeah yep all right that's all fine and dandy um let's try to do it a little bit backwards this time we have the force and i'm asking you about velocity so now you use your palm instead of your thumb. So your palm would be pointing towards the left, right? And your fingers would be going into the paper. So in this case, it would kind of look like this, your hand. And therefore, which direction is your thumb pointing? Up. So my velocity would be upward. Be up. Yeah. Here's the tricky part, though. You use your right hand. Um, use your right hand when it's a positive charge. Use your left hand when it's a negative charge. All right. And there's a few ways of remembering that. Who's taking organic chemistry right now? Yeah. All right. After doing massive amounts of organic chemistry, in life, um, you kind of remember that pluses are right handed chiral molecules and minuses are left handed chiral molecules. So I like to remember it that way. If you're not in organic chemistry, I, I have another one. And this is Lee, Kim, and I in our office trying to figure out silly mnemonics that you guys can use to remember which one's which. So if you're looking, if you do an L shape with your left hand, you see the L, so that's what you're the loser. And if you use it with your right hand, then everyone else is a loser, and you're not a loser, so that's positive. We're thinking about that, and we're like, hmm, I don't know if we'll remember that one. Or you can think, and then Leo was like, well, what if this is like kind of trying to do that? What kind of do for a negative? So I said, no, that's not social stuff. But if you want to be all inclusive. So just basically remember. That's our trick. That's your whole thing. It'll tell you in the question if this particle is charged positively or negatively. So in this case, it says positively charged particle. In my last problem, it also said positive charge. Yeah. All right. So I have a positively charged particle here. All right, I'm going to draw a big plus sign so that you know it's positively charged. And I'm asking you to find the direction of the force. There's four examples. Use your right hand four times. Figure these out. Go. What's the answer to 
Pero da. What's the answer to B? Enter the page. What's the answer for C? The answer for D. Up. Whatever these vectors are, it's the backwards of what a negative charge would do. So if you don't want to use your left hand, just do what you would do with your right hand, and the answer is going to be the opposite of that. Okay? So if it was a negative charge in A, the answer would be to the right. If it was negative charge in B, the answer would be towards you. If the answer, if the charge is negative in C, then it would be away from you, and so on and so forth. Answer this question. I'm going to start you off though, okay? So it's asking you about which one of these particles are negatively charged. And negatively charged um, particles use the left hand rule. You need to remember that. And another thing you need to remember is that they're doing circular motion, which means that they have a force pointing in which direction? Center. So all of these, whoops, all of these, before you even solve them, you can draw your force vectors. And then what you need to do. Is figure out which one's following the right hand rule, or which one's following the left. Have you had a question? Which one? Top right. So I use my right hand. Start towards the top. Right. All right. For the last one, I have my finger pointing up. And my thumb is going to the right, therefore my thumb is going to the <laughs> No, the fingers of the man. Okay, go ahead and do these. Genji, you're using your right hand. It's a negative charge. It's a negative?
Is there another one? Yeah. Steve. Any other Steve? I'm both negative to the We both follow the left hand rule. Okay. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So again, thumb. So we're talking about the left hand rule, okay? So thumb in the direction of V. My finger is pointing into the board, right? And my palm is facing in the middle. And that works because it's my left hand. So therefore, this has to be a negative charge. This one is not going to work because my thumb going in that direction and my fingers going into the board is going to give me a force in this direction, which is not correct. The force has to be in that direction of the circular motion. Okay? And if you do them for all, you get that it's A and C. Any questions on this? Pretty straightforward. This is what I was saying that uh, a magnetic force um, acts kind of like a centripetal force and causes objects to go in circular motion. That's just a reminder for you when you guys study this later on. And then we finally get to the equation part. Now, if you notice something, if I go back here to the most simple one here, right? Not even, this is too complicated. And let's just go to this one here. You can see that everything is 90 degrees from each other, right? So force is in the left or in the x axis, right? V is in the y axis, and x is in the z axis. Right, so that's your, those are your three dimensions right there, right? And they're all 90 degrees from each other, which means that it has no choice but for it to be a, what do we call this here, triple? It's a cross product of two vectors, right? It's a velocity vector crossed with a magnetic field vector. So there's your linear algebra for here, okay? And if we're talking about just the magnitude, and this is, the, this part is important for calculating the vector direction and, and uh, calculating the vector direction. And in some, if you do a whole matrix, what is it? What is it called when you solve for a cross product? It's like a it's not the determinant, is it? Is it the determinant? Yeah. So when you solve for the determinant, that's to find that's a complicated way to find the magnitude. But you can also find the magnitude only using this equation here. And the one is very simple. I have the magnitude of my velocity vector, and I have my magnitude for my force, uh, so sorry, my, my magnetic field vector, which is B, and some angle that separates that, right? And then my force is going to be perpendicular to both, so 90 degrees to this vector and 90 degrees to the other vector. And it has a magnitude, and the magnitude of this is described by this equation here. Maximize my magnetic field, what does the angle between my velocity and my magnetic field need to be? I want to maximize my force. What does the angle need to be? 90, exactly, because sine of 90 is what? Exactly. Sine of 90 is equal to 1. So if this angle here was exactly 90 degrees, so if they were perpendicular, then that would maximize the magnetic uh, force. That I would get. Okay. What if my velocity and my um, magnetic field are in the same direction? Exactly, there would be no force at all. Okay, because sine of zero is zero. Okay. okay, so we talked about magnetic field now, and I want to know what you think are the differences between magnetic field and electric field. I have to think back. I want you guys to talk about direction. Give you a hint. That's what I want you to think about. Think about direction, think about acceleration, yeah. Okay. Um, no, there is no, it has nothing to do with positive to negative in magnetic field. But for this one, yeah, it's from positive to negative. 
for electric field. For magnetic field, we won't write any because it doesn't apply to that. What's that? Yeah, you can see that it goes from north to south. If I have a charged particle in an electric field, what's going to happen? Okay. Ah, okay, so it cannot affect a stationary particle. A stationary charged particle. My God, Richie. What else? What, what about an electric field? What does an electric field do to a charge? What? Yeah, it'll accelerate it. It can accelerate a stationary charge. We're going to need these concepts because we're going to use them in the mass spectroscopy, both of them, both electric field and magnetic field. Let's do some problems. Um, here we have a charged particle. First of all, we need to figure out if it's an electron or a proton. I'll let you guys figure that out. And we got to talk about it in three different perspectives. From the perspective of gravitational field, from the perspective of an electric field, and the perspective of a magnetic field. Okay? So I'm going to call them G, E, and B. Then okay? we're going to talk about each one individually. We're talking gravity or the gravitational field. Which direction is it pointing? So the biggest mass, and when we're on Earth, that mass is usually Earth, and Earth is below us, above us, next to us. So yeah, in general, come on. In general, a gravitational field is pointing towards the down direction. All right. And the question it says uh, there is an electric field in the down direction. Come on. There's an electric field in the down direction. And in the last part, it says that there is a magnetic field in the north direction. Now, please don't confuse north and up. Please, we all understand the difference between the north and up. Up is that way. North is that way. Yeah, north of the is about there. South shore is there. Yeah. The north is not up. That's up. All right. So it says here that this is um, the magnetic field is north. So I'm going to write, I'm going to put an arrow like that, but I don't want you to con get confused and think that that upward arrow means that it's going up. That upward arrow is going north. So I'm going to write down here north. If that direction is north, and it says here that the velocity is east, then which direction is east? Left or right? Right. The east is going to be towards the right. So the magnetic field in this case is north, and the velocity is east. This is that. And now we have to figure out how is an electron going to behave in each of these. So if I put an electron, does an electron have a mass? Okay. And if I put in a gravitational field, is the gravitational force going to act on it? Yeah. And the magnitude, so I'm going to put a negative charge, and there's going to be a force of gravity, Fg equal to mass times the acceleration of gravity. Okay. If I put a negative charge in an electric field that's pointing downward, what's going to happen to it? Let's remember that. It's going to go up, because remember, electrons that go in which direction? Opposite of the electric field, right? So I have a negative charge. It's going to have an electrostatic force going upward. And that electrostatic force is going to be equal to Q times E. That's just stuff that we need to remember from the beginning of our course. E is a vector, and so is it after you.
You guys understanding so far? And finally, what's my electron going to do in a uh, magnetic field if it's traveling towards the right? So now we have to use it an electron or a proton? Left hand or right hand? Left hand. So if I use a left hand tool, are the forces, well, that's what we're going to do. The thumb, the thumb, the right, and it goes upwards, my left hand. So where is my magnetic force? Into the board. All right. So I'm going to write it here. It's going to be an X for F B. And the magnitude is going to be equal to what? And what's, first of all, before you answer what the magnitude is, what's the angle between my velocity and my magnetic field? 90, all right? So I can use my, uh, I can just use Q, V, B. I don't need to do sine 90 because that's just one. I mean, I can write it if I wanted to, but I'm not writing it because they're at 90 degrees to each other. And that's how you find the, mag the magnitude for the magnetic field, magnetic force. So far, so good? We're ahead of time. Okay, go ahead and do this problem. Is that the last one I have? No, we have two more. Do examples two and three. I'll walk around and try to help you guys. If you're done, let's take a break. Do you guys prefer a shorter break and finish earlier or a, a longer break and finish on time? Who has class after this? All right, so we'll take a shorter break. So, well, hold on. Let's see how long it takes for you guys to do these two problems. So I'll figure things out. Then.
So you might need, in this question, you might need to remember that FB would be equal to FC, which is equal to MV squared over R. Remember, centripetal force is, uh, is dependent on velocity, mass. Thank uh, you. 
Can I ask you guys a question, a recall question? Yes. When you're talking about anything that's doing a circular motion, the amount of time it takes to walk to the revolution, the cycle and how? I call it cycle. I'm talking about the time it takes. Capital T, if you know that arrow capital T, very different from lowercase, but lowercase T is time. The amount of time you want for revolution is capital T. It's called the period, exactly. Please remember that. Not for this year, for next year. Yeah. So, that's the unit for the Oh, that's the problem. All right, then move on to the next question. This one should be very straightforward. If you're done, take a break, come back at uh, 2.30. Thank you. 
Okay, let's get started again. Please bring PowerPoint number uh, 22. Thank you. 
It's okay because the, the, I don't need so much of a visual representation here. You can follow me on Adobe Connect or you can pull up the PowerPoint itself. Uh, basically, um, the way it works is you want to select so mass spectroscopy machine. Um, select atoms per polar cloud. And the atoms could be bigger than atoms, you can actually model it. There's a selector for mass and a selector for charge. There's three components to this, and I'll explain to you what they are. Essentially, the particle starts off at rest. We have this particle here, it starts off at rest. Okay. And there is an electric field. Remember these things? What are these things called? Parallel planes, exactly, and a bionic charge is perfect. Field, this particle, what's going to happen here? It has a positive charge here. It's going to accelerate, right? This thing got repelled by this, it's going to attract by this, and it's going to go through this. Okay, now, that, this is a region, we're going to call this region one. Region one. Right? And then it's going to this area, which we're going to call region two. And region two, the term for it is called a velocity selection. The velocity selection because it doesn't exactly match. It's still met for certain type of particles. So, what's going to happen is when my particle reaches this point here, well, it means a certain type of particle. I have a velocity in this, this direction, right? So, it's going to have a V in this direction. And at the end of this region, there is another slit right there. And this particle. Only make it to this split path if it goes to the right velocity. Yeah, if it goes slower, fast, it doesn't matter. But what it needs to go is in which direction? It needs to just go through, right? So that means in this region, you cannot have any forces acting on it in this direction or this direction. Or if you do have forces in these directions, then you're not going to. If I'm going to see a force downwards and a force upwards, then the two forces have a tendency to come together to be going straight. You agree with that statement? Okay, so now we need to see the two forces that we're going to use are going to be our tonic force, Fe, and magnetic force, Fb. Okay, and since this particle is only going to go straight if the two forces are equal. Because if it's not equal, if let's say the magnetic field is too strong, then what's going to happen? It's going to go up. It's not just going to go straight up, but it's going to go like that, let's say. Right? Or if the electrostatic force is too strong, then the particle is going to go on like this. And it's not going to go through the slit. And then finally, once you're out of region two, you're going to be in this region called region three. Which is a tube that's curved like this. And this, at the end of this, there's going to be another slit, another hole with a detector here. Detector. Okay. And only if you, if you manage to go straight here, and then here you manage to have the perfect curvature to enter the detector, then the machine will turn. And so here, the only type of Force that you're going to need. What kind of motion is this? Circular motion. So, what kind of force can you use? Centripetal. And then, when we're talking about the concept that we're talking about today, centripetal force is which magnetic force. So, there's going to be a magnetic field here. So, over here, there's an electric field. Here, 
There's just a magnetic field, no electric field. Okay? And so this is going to have a radius r, right? And it's going to have a velocity v when it enters the uh, So far so good? All right. So what's important is what's going on in each region. We're going to talk about each one. Um, let's start with the first one. Okay. So we're going to have uh, it's going to be all in front. This is positively charged. Let's take a positively charged proton. All right. So this is going to be a proton. And what we need to know in this electric field is the potential difference right. so there's an example that we were going to do so the example gave a potential difference here of three thousand okay. so that's point something because my based on that Going to accelerate some kind of gain kinetic energy, and it's going to increase its energy as it goes to the And we're going to be able to find the expansion. So, how do I determine the final velocity? Which equation? We have to think about it. Bear in mind, this is the maybe for a What could I use? Is that MA? That would be the I'll find out. Q delta V over R, right? I can, I can get that equation. But I still don't have R, and I still don't have A. So I can't use that equation. Give you a hint. That's for the next. Can you? Energy divided by charge. Let me rephrase the question. Well, what would be that general electric field? Electric force so we don't have we don't know the first thing we can just based on what we see in the world, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what is the name of this field? Potential electric field. What does potential electric field mean? Kinetic energy. What you have, Q is also D. To become kinetic energy because now we have a really good right? It's just Q times QV over M squared that QC. Okay, going from there to there. So, calculate, tell me the Which rate of action is going to be? Are you talking about the right one? I still do. Yeah. Did I do it right? Yeah, that was it. Oh, I removed it now. Which is the last one? 
some point. So if you have a lot of Six point four times ten to the eleven. Six point four times ten to the eleven. Six point four times ten to the eleven. Yeah. So the velocity is times ten. This to go straight, even so that my magnetic field and my force and my electric are equal and opposite. If I want that FD is equal and opposite to FD, and FD is equal to Q times D, if you guys remember that, right? And FB is going to be QVD. So my Q is going to cancel each other out, right? And I have a V that is equal to P over D. And then the question, I mean, well, you guys don't see the information here. If you look at the question, it tells you that there's a magnetic field of V equaling to one Tesla, 1.0 Tesla. And it's asking you to find the strength of the electric field in this region. Yeah, it would be D is equal to 8.0 times 10 to the 5. What are the units? Newton per coulomb. Yeah. Okay. I have a proton here. What's the proton of my Yeah, okay. So my electric field, D, e, is down. Here's the hard part of this question. What is the direction of the magnetic field? It's not the force, but the field. So the, so the force is going up, the velocity is going to the right, so sum up, sum to the right, right hand because it's a proton, therefore my fingers are pointing towards the magnetic field, therefore there is a magnetic field going into the base. All right, and now it's getting really messy, but essentially that's what it's gonna look like, right? Magnetic field is the direction of the magnetic field would create a force going at that, at that, uh, at the gun. Only the, the velocity, only that velocity, 8.0 times 10 to the 5, is going to be the only thing that points to the magnetic field in there. Now, if uh, those two facts, right, this side of the equation would be higher, right, and therefore the magnetic force pointing upward is going to be stronger and it's going to curve up. 
And if the, uh, the point is low, then this side of the equation would be lower, and therefore this side of the equation would be stronger, and therefore it would curve down. So that's the velocity. Why is the velocity? Yeah? Yeah? Okay. We're on the Finally, we have this we determine what our velocity for a uh, velocity of where we calculate it here. We select this velocity. But we don't have to do it. How do we determine which velocity as in the we definitely have the ability to control this. What else is Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Velocity we want to select at the end now we want something that's going to reach this detector, this detector, do this perfect circular. All right, so that means that if that by writing this, and so this B or F B rather, the force. Um, has to be equal to some centripetal force that's equal to mv squared over r. And so we can calculate this r because we have, we have a velocity, right? And we have, do we have the magnetic field? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's written in the question again, but it's again 1.0 Tesla. So now we have QVB equal to mv squared over r. We can cancel out these v's here. So you're going to have mv is equal to qv is equal to r. We calculate the radius. The radius is one. We have positive one to solve it. Now, let me come back to the idea of the machine is so let's say you didn't know the mass. You can regulate the magnetic field, right? And based on the mass of the unknown mass of the object, which is this is the unknown here, based on that, you're regulating this and having a constant R, we can make it so that only those that have a certain mass can enter the detector. If the mass is too high, then it would go something that would do this. If the mass is too low, it would do this. And only the ones with a perfect mass are going to be the ones that have. Okay. So we'll set up this for the mass is We'll keep sending samples and it'll regulate the magnetic field until there is something that hits the detector. And once you have that, once you hit the detector, you know, okay, you have your B that you've measured and you have everything else, you could solve for and have the Now, there's something I want to um, This is curving in this direction with a radius in this direction. The magnetic field is this strength. Which direction is the magnetic field? Out, in, that's what I'm asking. So first of all, which direction is the, uh, is the force? At this point, which direction is the force? Down. All right. If the direction is up, so I can go like that. Fingers, are we looking for, we're looking for magnetic field. So the, how do we do this? It would be like that. 
right? So if it's like that, then the magnetic field is going where? Out. The magnetic field in this whole thing is going out. <laughs> It's kind of funny because it's complicated. You know, there's a lot of calculations. Hey, when the people talk about the technical sophisticated machines using the science to work, right? I mean, it's really like, it's really not on us. You know? Right? You can use you can build your own. I'm just gonna make sure that I didn't forget anything because I'm not using my slides anymore. No, it's pretty good. We've gone over everything. Are there any questions? Yeah. Thank <laughs> you.